Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to the virtual opening for Coastal Reflections, the current exhibition up at the KMEEC Art Center. Uh, we have a great evening lined up for you. We've got both the artists here to talk about their uh, stunning artwork. Um, my name is Stephen Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. Um, and we've partnered with the KMEEC uh, to present this amazing collection of photography. I'll be your host this evening. Uh, and I am coming to you uh, from West Vancouver, where the KMEEC is also situated, which is on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, in particular, the Squamish Nation and the tsleil -Waututh Nation. And as guests, we are incredibly grateful to our host nations for their stewardship and connections of these beautiful lands since time immemorial. And everyone watching, if you have questions uh, or comments for our talented artists, uh, please drop those in the chat. Uh, we will get to those uh, near the end of the evening. Uh, should be really great. We've got two stunning uh, collections of artwork here in Coastal Reflections, um, some really cool uh, photography by artists uh, Sanam, excuse me, and Trevor. Excuse me, sorry. Um, and it is uh, a stunning uh, exhibition that is on now until July 3rd up at the Kami Art Center in, uh, in West Vancouver. So now that all of that's out of the way, uh, it's time to meet our amazingly talented artists. Uh, so they're going to uh, say a little bit about themselves. And uh, I think we're gonna start with Trevor. Trevor, could you please introduce yourself to everyone watching? Well, thank you. Uh, hi, Stephen. Hi, Sanam. And hello. And thank you to anyone joining us or anybody who's going to tune in and watch this later on YouTube. Um, and, and thank you to the West Van Community Arts Council, particularly Stephen, for uh, working with us and putting in so much energy to, to put this exhibition together. Um, my, my name is Trevor Schmidt. Um, I'm a very new artist. So for me, this is such an incredible opportunity to be able to share and, and display my art with the North Shore community. Um, I've lived in North Van for, uh, I think just over 15 years. Um, so it's, it's felt like home for much of my life now. Um, my, my journey to becoming an artist is pretty unusual, I think. Um, my career background and, and education has been in um, crime analysis and criminal intelligence analysis. Um, for various public safety agencies. So very left brain, logical, methodical thinking about as far removed from creative visual arts as, as one can get, uh, you know, and that has been a fascinating and very gratifying career being able to, to contribute to investigations into the absolute worst of human cruelty. But um, I realized uh, a few years back that that work, although gratifying was deeply impacting my emotional health and, and my mental health, which is uh, what led me to embrace art. Um, I was in a very dark negative place from having spent so much time focusing on, you know, the worst of humanity, on, on people hurting each other. Um, and, and I recognized that I needed to embrace a hobby or some sort of activity that would promote mindfulness and, and basically take my mind off my work. Um, so thankfully, one day uh, in early 2020, without, without giving it much thought, I pulled out my old Nikon camera that had been collecting dust in the back of a drawer since the mid-2000s. And I thought, well, that's, in terms of hobbies, photography seems as good as any. Um, and so I challenged myself to just learn the basics of manual photography before the end of 2020. Um, I, I had tried getting off of automatic um, mode probably a half a dozen times over the years, but I just never grasped it. Like the, the principles of exposure did just did not make sense to me. Uh, it just didn't feel like a good fit. So I'd put the, the poor camera back in the drawer and forget about it. Um, but anyway, in, in early 2020, uh, so shortly before the pandemic, I, I you know began experimenting and playing with photography and, and it just clicked no pun intended, um, you know, I very quickly formed a, a very strong bond with, with photography, with cameras, and I was 
very quickly drawn towards unconventional techniques like intentional camera movements, motion blur, uh, long exposures, and essentially just pushing my camera far beyond and pushing myself far beyond the limitations of, of standard photography. Um, so it's been just about two and a half years. Um, and and I've been carving out my own tiny niche within the abstract art world. And, and every day I continue to experiment and, and just try to create new styles and methods. Um, I, I truly experience my camera as a paintbrush. To me, it, you know, I'm so far away from just pointing and shooting it. You know, it, I look at whatever scene is before me and I use whatever method feels most appropriate to really brush to pull apart colors, textures, shapes, shadows, contrasts, um, to spin, to tear, to really to paint with reality in front of me, to, to transform our landscapes or our world into something new, ideally something different that, that you've never seen before. Um, and it's been so rewarding. Um, you know, I've, I've personally experienced the tremendous healing power of art. Um, of, of creating abstraction. Um, and I continue to use art every day as self-therapy, which is hence the name of, of my series within our exhibition. Um, my series is called Coastal Therapy. Um, you know, we're so blessed here in the Pacific Northwest to have green space in every direction and rivers and creeks and oceans close to home. And, and that's the setting of all of my artwork. Um, yeah, just uh, grateful to be here. Excellent, thank you, Trevor. That was wonderful. Yeah, we have another amazingly talented uh, North Shore artist, uh, part of this exhibition. Sanam, could you please introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I grew up on the North Shore, uh, studied visual fine arts at UBC, where I had a chance to explore with um, sculpture, painting, drawing, photography, and also short film. Um, I've also uh, I've lived in different social and economical conditions uh, that deeply influences my art, and uh, also um, uh, I have had exhibitions in North America and the Middle East. Um, I, I found the the camera very fascinating from a very young age. Um, so I started taking images uh, uh, quite young and um, looking through the lens and trying to capture that perfect image and sharing it with um, others and it can speak volumes. It can have a profound impact on one's perspective. Um, I, found, I find the camera to be uh, an empowering instrument. Uh, it allows you to express yourself, uh, raise questions, uh, pr provoke deep thinking and invoke uh, uh, imagination. As, so that's what I tried to capture in uh, the reflection series. And um, I will, I'm going to really enjoy sharing it with everyone. Excellent. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much, Sanal. That was, that was great. There's a lot of, um, you both do very different work, which we're going to see very shortly. Um, but just uh, your approaches, there, there are some definite similarities, your, your, your sort of desire to uh, uh, provoke and invoke uh, and, and feel and, and use your artwork uh, as expression. Um, and manipulating photography uh, is really great because uh, a lot of the times photography can be, you know, a very, a very static image. Um, but the way the two of you manipulate your work uh, really brings a whole new, whole new level uh, to what you're trying to say and to photography as an art form. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see. And we're going to see a little bit of that right now. We're just going to take a real quick um, tour uh, of the uh, exhibition up at the k -Meek. It's, uh, yeah, it'll be uh, just really quick and really doesn't do justice to the amazing artwork. You really have to go see it uh, in person. But we're just going to do that right now. Okay. 
So this is as you come in on the uh, main floor uh, at the Grosvenor Theater Lobby. We start off, there's some uh, great artist statements from both of the artists. Um, and we start off with Sanam's uh, really amazing work from her reflection series. They're pretty uh, interesting um, trying to discern exactly what you photographed and, and what you're representing uh, through all these uh, reflections of these um, beautiful landscapes and the reflections themselves uh, really elevate the scenes that you're making. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I, I really like to um, create curiosity within an image. And I think um, I was able to do that within this series. Definitely. And then we move into uh, some examples of Trevor's work, um, which you can definitely see that sort of uh, painterly aspect using the light that you were talking about. Did Trevor's yeah. work the other day, I was walking through, sorry, I was walking to the gallery and I was um, just like taking a moment because I think a lot of times we, we've been, uh, you know, passing through the gallery with, with uh, uh, a brush and I hadn't had a chance to really like, look at them and, and, and with some time and, I, and, and you can see the waves kind of moving as you stare <laughs> at, the, at some of the images. And Sanam, likewise, my son and I were in there yesterday admiring your, uh, your collection. Well, thank you, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, and there's more work um, on the downstairs uh, lobby to the McEwen Theater. Uh, there's more uh, stunning artwork. Um, right now we're looking at uh, more of Trevor's pieces. Yeah, I, I really love all the colors in Trevor's pieces. I've, I've always been really fascinated with color. <laughs> Yeah, and I found I'm, I'm very drawn towards colorful, light, airy pieces. I think, again, because of the therapeutic aspect of, of photography that I have embraced, I kind of stay away from dark, depressing shadows as much as I can. Yeah, it shows definitely in your images. <laughs> Yeah, and then we move on to uh, some more examples of Sanam's phenomenal work. So it was, it was interesting to talk to a few people in the gallery because um, a lot of people thought that these images were manipulated or photoshopped and, and that none of them are. They're, they're actually just captured reflections in, around BC. Which is amazing to, to have that skill to be able to do that and, you know, and not get the camera or yourself in the shot is pretty wonderful and to capture the light in just that perfect way where you can get, you know, sort of the surface and a little bit of what's below the surface and what's being reflected on it. Yeah, it is it's a lot of skill. Definitely. I've deleted hundreds of reflection shots of my own because my shadow or my tripod or my shoe is in them. <laughs> it's as hard as it looks. So that was just a, a quick little tour of the, uh, of the show. Uh, please uh, go see it in person. Uh, the k uh, you can go check out all of the beautiful artwork um, up at the k Mondays through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you have tickets to any of their amazing uh, programming, which you should definitely get out and support local theater, uh, you can check it out there as well. So now we're going to dive a little uh, deeper uh, into these artworks and hear from our artists as they uh, choose, uh, they've each chosen a piece that's on display that sort of talks a little bit more about their exhibition, uh, their series as a whole. Uh, so we're going to pull those up. And remember, if you have any questions or comments uh, for Trevor or Sanam, please drop those in the chat. So I believe, uh, Trevor, we're going to start with you again. Okay. Yeah, so this is um, one, of, one of the 15 pieces in my, my Coastal Therapy series. Um, I named it Mind Activation, uh, and I'll explain why. So 
I shot this uh, in the midst of our seemingly endless wet cold winter that we all just suffered through where it uh, felt like the rain started in early October and didn't stop until I don't know yesterday um, so I believe this was I believe this was January um, I was at Ambleside Beach um, trying to take shelter under the, the Squamish Nation wel welcome figure totem which I can see over your shoulder Stephen in a different piece there um, yeah, trying to, trying to take, uh, photos during a heavy rainstorm, never easy. Um, but, uh, I, so one thing photography has really allowed me to, um, embrace is all different climates, all different seasons and just get out there and see what I can produce. So I'd been shooting under the, the totem for about 20 minutes. I was completely soaked. I kept having to take out, um, lens cloths and try to dry my lens over and over and over. And I was just about to leave uh, and the rain eased up just a little bit. And uh, the sky across Burrard Inlet, just above Point Grey, started to open up just enough for these intensely golden streaks of sunlight to be visible. And I felt like a bat coming out of a cave after hibernation. Like, I felt like I hadn't seen the sun in months. Um, so despite soaking wet, I continued to, to take shots and um, as I often do, I decided to try something new. So um, until that point, most of my shots um, were taken with a shutter speed of between a tenth of a second and a third. But I just couldn't get enough of the beautiful sunlight. So I bumped up my exposure time to a full two seconds and started, started to paint, essentially started my camera painting. So for, you know, for a camera, two seconds is a very long time to be recording imagery. So for me, uh, you know, it, it gave me enough time to camera paint, you know, those dark moody seas and then the rows of sunbeams on the top and to drag and pull um, the city lights across the water uh, into what you see before you. In fact, I was trying to, trying to tie a knot out of the lights. If you zoom in or if you come and see it up close, I kind of failed at tying knots, but regardless, it, I was quite happy with the uh, with um, that photo shoot. So um, this was one of a few moments since becoming an artist in which I could sense that I had had kind of reached a new plateau in terms of you know, my own skill level and the, the precision required to make a shot like this. Um, I've since taken this even further and I'm sometimes shooting three, four, five second uh, pieces in daylight, which of course requires careful control of of all the various aspects of exposure, but the longer that I can shoot in daylight, the more, the more I, I can accomplish in one shot. Um, so at that time, it, it made me reflect on the, um, the kind of left brain, right brain dichotomy and how it felt as if my right brain creativity was, was being awoken after decades of dormancy, hence mind activation is the title. So this is, is definitely one of my favorite pieces in the show. Thank you, thank you for sharing, Trevor. Yeah, it's a, it's a stunning piece. Thank you. Yeah, all the all the, the knots, like you said, and and, and the streaks uh, from across the shore. There's uh, there's a lot of interesting textures and and movement happening. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Trevor. Uh, now we've got uh, a work from Sanam that we're going to uh, take a look at. Yeah, Sanam, please tell us about this, this lovely piece. Uh, so this piece is called Milky Way. And um, the funny thing is, it's, it's actually taken around the same area as where uh, Trevor took his shot. <laughs> because I took this shot at, at Ambleside at the pond, not, not, not the ocean view there. But um, uh, I was planning to take most of my shots for this series around April. And uh, I was waiting for the weather to warm up. But as you all know, it, we had one of the coldest Aprils ever. 
And um, uh, when I went out for the shot, uh, it was actually quite late. Um, it was a windy day and it was, I was losing light by the minute. Um, so I was quite hopeless. Um, so I, I sat up my tripod and I, um, as, as you see, there's a, a pink, uh, almost like a pink planet in the center of the photograph. And that was actually a pebble that was uh, floating on the surface. And uh, the water was uh, rippling uh, pretty rapidly. And I didn't think that I was going to capture any kind of reflection on that day. But um, I, as I looked at this pebble, it almost looked like a peaceful island amongst this, you know, rumbling uh, water. And um, uh, finally, I took a couple of shots and I was successful to take uh, to get the exact shot that I wanted. And later on, when I looked at the image, it, it looked like an, a photograph from outer space. Uh, the pink pebble turned into a planet and um, it, it really looks uh, like this hopeful planet uh, amongst this chaotic surroundings that sometimes we have. And I think it symbolizes hope, uh, the hope that we all kind of uh, have for peace and empathy and progress. And, and I think that that's what uh, this piece talks about. Oh, that was that was lovely, Sanam. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Um, and I definitely there is a lot of uh, that sense of of, of peace um, and hope. I think in your work and and also in yours, Trevor. It's one of the great unifying uh, things about your very very different. Uh, approaches to art making. Thank you, Trevor. And thank you, Stephen. Yeah, no, it's it's great. I remember when you uh, pulled this piece out uh, when we were installing and, and you showed me that little pebble and I was like, you're right, it does look like a planet in, in, in outer space. It's very cool. Awesome, well, thank you so much for sharing uh, those insights. Um, something that's uh, a question that I had what is it about uh, photographing and capturing landscapes uh, that makes a good sort of subject or vehicle um, for what you want to say? Um, because as you've both said, uh, you know, your pieces are more than just, uh, you know, a beautiful scene. So why, why choose um, landscape as, as your subject to, to express yourself through art? Um, I think it's the any, anytime you go out in nature, it's so inspiring. Every every adventure, um, if it's your garden or a forest or the beach, uh, you discover something new. It's it's um it's um it's always fresh, and uh, I think um every everyone feels very peaceful when they're out in nature, and uh, there's always something to learn from it. And we're so grateful to live in British Columbia. It's seriously one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's really hard not to take pictures and not to be inspired. Yeah, I mean, I, I've spent my entire life in, in the Pacific Northwest and, um, you know, I, I credit my, um, my mother and father for instilling in me, you know, an, an appreciation for, for, for our part of the world um, and the, the natural beauty at a young age, but it wasn't until I, until I found photography, again, only a couple of years ago, that I fully began to appreciate um, not only just the beauty of, of where we live, but the healing power of nature, of spending time in a forest or watching waves or looking at rocks beside, you know, on the seashore. Um, you know, I, I initially headed off to the woods when I endeavored to learn how to use a camera because I thought, you know, taking pictures of trees would be far easier than trying to work with humans. And, uh, and it definitely is, but, um, yeah, I mean, I've just experienced the, um, yeah, the significant health benefits that, you know, everybody should be so fortunate to, to have the time and the ability to, you know, try forest bathing or, you know, just spend half a day by the ocean and, 
and it's so good for your soul and for mental health. You know, so whether or not I have a camera in my hand, I'm, I'm incredibly thankful to to live where we live. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, agree with both of those sentiments. And that that healing um, uh, is something that you've both sort of touched on uh, in discussing your work, and it's something that you know I feel comes across in your work um, as. You know, Sanam is your series is titled and as, you know, partially the title of uh, the exhibition is about uh, reflections and reflecting. And um, I feel both of your uh, bodies of work really ask the viewer to to pause um, and not just, you know, skim by um, and to really sort of examine what's going on in the artwork and therefore hopefully consider uh, why they think that, you know, and to to reflect upon um, their own interpretations. Um, how important, or maybe not important is the right word, uh, what is it that you hope uh, viewers will um, uh, sort of get out of uh, experiencing your artwork? Um, I think uh, the purpose of the whole reflection series was for people, for anyone to be open to new thoughts, uh, to rethink the way um, we live and the, the things that we do. Because um, uh, I think most of the time we're all kind of like in pilot mode and we kind of live our life the way um, uh, we saw our parents live. But I think um, uh, we're, uh, we're at a certain point and, and through <clears throat> all this hard time that we all went through, through COVID and uh, during this time, um, I think it's, it's, it's a time of reflection to question everything and, and see if we are really doing our best. If you personally, it's in, uh, as a society and, and collectively. Yeah, I mean, I, I second all of what Sanam said. Um, you know, for myself, the most meaningful moments I've had since uh, you know, presenting myself as an artist to the world and, and sharing artwork on Instagram and on my website. Um, you know, the most meaningful moments are when somebody will tell me that, you know, one of my pieces provided them with a sense of calm or, uh, you know, a moment of, you know, some peace of mind. Um, so that that is my inspiration for trying to, uh, you know, continually try new photography techniques and to try to better my art because, you know, I, I can't think of a, um, you know, a greater gift as, as an artist than to hear people, you know, also getting the same, uh, you know, emotional or mental health benefits that it gives me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. That was great. So it uh, looks like uh, a little quiet in the chat here. <laughs> Everybody's out okay. enjoying the sunny evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> down at the beach. Yeah, totally. It's rare um, to have sun these days. It is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. If, uh, if anyone, uh, when you're watching this, um, if you want to uh, do a little bit a further exploration uh, into these artists. Um, in the description, uh, there are links uh, to their uh, social media. So you can go and check that out and uh, see what they're up to and what they're posting. Uh, follow them, make sure to follow them and like all their stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, as we said, um, this exhibit uh, is on up until uh, July 3rd. Um, just a whole month left to, uh, to take it in. So we totally encourage you to, it's a, it's a stunning exhibition full of uh, provocative and uh, evocative and impactful um, and calming. It's, there's, there's, there's a lot of emotions involved in this exhibition and some amazing techniques to try and figure out uh, how these artists have done it. Um, you can read a little bit about that on the, uh, the statements and bios uh, that are posted on the walls. Uh, but there's there's definitely some skill involved, uh, and I'm impressed, Trevor, since you're you're so new to this, to have picked up on this experimentation uh, so quickly. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm very impressed by Trevor. <laughs> Been an artist for two years now. 
It, it is a blessing that came out of nowhere. Absolutely. I, I found abstract photography utterly by accident. I was standing up to my knees in Mosquito Creek in North Vancouver in uh, spring 2020. My son, I think, was throwing rocks at fish or something. And I I was uh, trying to kind of do what Sanam does so masterfully now. I was trying to take reflection shots and I kind of spun my camera by mistake as I was pressing the shutter button. And I looked at it on my on my display and I thought, well, this, this actually looks pretty cool. And so I kept playing around with different camera movements and went home and I think I told my wife, I, I think I've discovered a brand new form of photography that nobody's ever tried before. <laughs> and then several Google searches proved me utterly wrong. And I started to learn about the history of motion blur and intentional camera movement and, and realized I had not reinvented the wheel, but uh, it was, it was a fluke that turned into uh into a very rewarding experience. Yeah. And Sanam, it's it's impressive. Um, your multidisciplinary background, um, you've done, you know, like film and painting and sculpture and photography. Um, and I think you can really kind of see uh, some of that in, in your work. Um, there's definitely uh, an intent um, and a purpose uh, in, in your pieces and, and, and you know how to, how to get what you want which I, I assume comes from experience, from just experimenting with all these different art forms. Um, yes, um, I, I really, I have really enjoyed working with different forms, but photography has really been a staple always. Um, but I do, um, I, I have really enjoyed uh, short film as well, and installation performance. I've tried all of it. And <laughs> <laughs> and the, as long as, you know, when you have something to express, you'll find any tool to express it. And um, I think um, sometimes you, you have to find the right tool to, to say what you need to say. And um, uh, I think from a very young age, um, I, my parents found that I was very uh, interested in art. And uh, it was something that I couldn't really escape. It was always with me. And um, uh, I, I find uh, different mediums very useful. But photography has uh, really opened up a lot of um, pathways for me. And um, it really, um, uh, I guess, uh, I, I feel like I, I'm in a set, I have a sense of community with other artists and it's, it's much more easier to share gives me a lot of control and um, I can express myself uh, very freely. Excellent. That community um, as an artist is, is very important because uh, a lot of practices are, are solitary. Um, so being able to, to find a, an art community to share your work with, that's, that's wonderful, that feels great. Um, and I'm glad that you two uh, have made such a, such a wonderful co connection um, that, uh, for those of you who don't know um, how we determine our exhibitions is we have a, an independent jury and they recommend artists to us and they saw these two amazing photographers and how they were manipulating uh, the lens and thought wouldn't this be a really interesting exhibition um, so it's it's great that the two of you have made this this connection with each other yeah, um, we've actually um, we we've been in communication constantly for this show, and um, I think we found some mutual friends as well in in, in between it. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's been uh, definitely been rewarding, you know, meeting Saddam and, and getting to know her work and her her style, and yeah, it's. It's clear, clear the jury made a good match for sure. I could, I could see us doing another show down the road together again. Yeah, thank you, Trevor. I think we've, we've been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, I would definitely be there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sue. So uh, thank you everyone uh, for coming out and watching this and for watching this later. It's been a, a pleasure chatting with these two amazing uh, local artists, hearing about their work. And again, please go check out Coastal Reflections at the K-Meek Art Center, um, which is on now until July 3rd. Uh, so have a, a wonderful evening. Um,
and we'll see you later. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. Have a good evening. Excellent. That was